Russians don't leak any new information through me. Uh, neither the, the the Republicans, neither the Democrats, neither anybody. So I have nothing to say about Hunter Biden that you have probably not heard somewhere else. I have nothing new to say. I have nothing original to say. I have no information that nobody else has. I'll tell you my opinion about whether Hunter Biden is corrupt or not in a minute, but it's based on my general view of corruption in government, not on any particular information that I might have about the Hunter Biden case. Uh, I, I find it fascinating that people love to talk about stuff they know nothing about. They, they have nothing to add. They know nothing uh, additional, and yet they can pontificate on something like Hunter Biden for hours and hours and hours without really basically reading the New York Post article, which you all can read if you want to, if you so choose. All right, so that's a quick summary of the Hunter Biden thing. New York Post broke the story. I guess there's a laptop, uh, emails. They've got access to emails. Emails that suggest that in Ukraine, Hunter Biden, um, and you guys can correct me because you probably, actually, you probably are more up to speed on the Hunter Biden story than I am. Anyway, that Hunter Biden uh, introduced certain people uh, within Ukraine to his father. The assumption there is that those introductions had to do with money. Uh, Hunter Biden, of course, was on the, um, on the uh, board of directors of a Ukrainian company. Then uh, a separate line of uh, story is that Hunter Biden went, to, uh, went with his father to China on uh, Air Force Two. And in China, he had coffee with a uh, well-known Chinese uh, businessman. Uh, they, at least that's what he claims, that he had coffee with him. Uh, about a week later, he was appointed to a board of a new private equity fund that was approved by the Chinese government, and he's on the board of this fund. And again, the assumption is that, uh, you know, he's on the board, not because he knows anything necessarily, but he's on the board because he has connections and because he's the son of the vice president of the United States and that, but can buy contacts for the Chinese and therefore... Um, he, he, you know, basically he was a conduit to, to access his father for favors with regard to China. Uh, and and um, uh, he did the same thing in Ukraine. Right, now, on top of that, I guess there's stories about him using drugs, but I think those are old stories. I think he's, we've known he's used his drug for a long time. And of course, most of the stuff about Hunter Biden was all investigated by the Republicans in the Senate or the House. One of the committees investigated this. And it was all made um, made uh, available made available um, during the impeachment. So the impeachment during the impeachment, Trump tried to shift the discussion of Hunter Biden uh, with regard to Ukraine, and of course the impeachment to a large extent was about Trump trying to put pressure on the Ukrainians to investigate Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, and and potentially uh, holding back. Um, uh, weapons uh, that had been approved by Congress, holding them back illegally as a way to, 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 le to put leverage on the Ukrainian government to investigate his political opponents. Now, you probably noticed that I didn't talk much about the impeachment. I didn't talk much about what Trump did. I didn't talk much about Hunter Biden then, although I did a little bit, and I haven't talked much about it since. Because I find it all really, really, really boring. I mean, is any of this shocking to anybody? Let's assume it's all true. Is anybody surprised there's influencing, influence peddling going on in Washington, D.C.? Is there a son or daughter of any vice president who is not taking advantage of the fact that they were the son of daughter of the vice president, or even better, the president? Is there any, anybody here who thinks that the Trump business and the Trump children have not benefited from the fact that Donald Trump is president? Does anybody think there is a politician in Washington, D.C. who is not at least somewhat corrupt? in the sense of a favor here, uh, an appropriations there, uh, 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 an additional something good for the farmers over here. I mean, isn't it true that we passed lots and lots of money to give to farmers so that they wouldn't 
feel the pain of the of the tariffs that Trump had imposed and in a sense to by their silence so they would continue voting for him is that not political corruption in some way I mean what is this pretense I mean how many politicians do you know go into government poor and come out of the other side rich do you think AOC if she ever leaves government will return to being a bartender do you think that any of these politicians ever? Now, some of them are so corrupt that there's literally cash found in their refrigerator. There have been a number of congressmen that are caught with suitcases full of cash. And that's one level of corruption, and I think there's quite a bit of that going on. But then there's other levels of corruption of, of, of uh, people buying them stuff and people, people putting money for them for when they retire and all kinds of shenanigans are constantly going on. And, and people getting jobs for relatives, people, all kinds of stuff, constantly. They go into that inn and they come out rich. And if they don't come out immediately rich, they get rich very quickly. Why do they get rich very quickly? Because somebody on Wall Street or somebody in business or some lobbyist will hire them immediately, right as soon as they retire, so that they can lobby their friends to pass bills that favor whatever business this is. I mean, really? They're all corrupt. Biden's a crooked family? Maybe. I don't know. Hunter seems crooked. I don't know how deep it goes. But they're all crooks. Trump is not a crooked family. And and uh, put aside Trump... Uh, what, you know, the Bushes who, who have had the governor of Texas, the governor of Florida, the, they, they've, got, they've got nieces and nephews in all kinds of political places, and they've, they've obviously been two presidents. And you think that family has never done favors to anybody? Has never gotten any favors from anyone? Ever? Nowhere? Not a better real estate deal? Not a, not a, not a discount at a country club membership? Not, not, never? None of that? Nothing happens. Not board seats. You think these people are super talented? That's why they sit on boards. You think they're super talented? That's why they get hired by Wall Street firms when they retire from politics? Yeah, Biden's family's been in politics longer, so they're probably more corrupt. <laughs> That's absolutely true. You know, and the Clintons and the Bushes have been even longer, so they're probably even more corrupt. So the problem here is not. How big a super chat do I need to go away forever? N there's no size super chat that will make me go Zbin64. Keeps coming back. I find it wonderful that the people who uh, hate me the most keep coming back to listen to me. Maybe you should actually do a super chat. Maybe contribute a little money for me. Not only are you helping my stats. But by being here, but but maybe you should put a few dollars in that. That would be real self-sacrifice. But, you know, I'm so awful that you want to continue to hear my voice. Hundred million. I'm, no, I'm not going away. I mean, the whole beauty of having a hundred million is to be able to is to be able to buy a whole TV channel so I can dominate the airwaves. So Zeban 64 won't be able to ever escape my voice. All right. Um, by the way, uh, since you remind me, uh, if you disagree with Zeban, then show some love on the super chat. Show him, uh, so show him that there are people are here that actually value what I do, uh, disagree or agree, think that there's a value here, and you can do that by uh, making a small contributions or a large contribution on the uh, super chat right now. So uh, you know, and and of course, don't forget to like the show. Uh, the 60 likes, 112 people watching live, uh, so we can certainly get those likes uh, likes up. But but yeah, show some love with the super chat, even if it's a small amount, just to tell Zeban64 to go to hell. <laughs> Politics is corrupt. It's corrupt at the state level. It's corrupt at the local level. It's corrupt at the federal level. It is all about the politics of pull. Ayn Rand discussed this years ago, decades ago. And yeah, by the way, 
the Bidens are corrupt. What's new? So, uh, again, so is almost everybody. And the source of this corruption, the source of this corruption, is the power that we have given our government. When you give people the kind of power that our government has, when you give people the power over every aspect of our economy, when you give people the power, thank you guys, really appreciate that. When you give people the power over the economic fate of companies, when you give people the power to, in a sense, print a trillion dollars, when you give people the power to decide where bridges will be built, where factories will be made, who gets permission to build what, when, where, and how, when you give people the power to do foreign aid, why are we even giving Ukraine money? Of billions and billions and billions of dollars. When you give people the power over a puss of trillions of dollars, then of course you're going to get corruption. The power lusting politicians are not just going to write checks for billions and billions of dollars and not take a cut when a cut is offered, when a cut is convenient. And we don't care. We elect them anyway. We don't care about the corruption. I mean, Hillary was super corrupt. And did the Democrats have any problem nominating her? No. Simon from Iceland hasn't been around for a long time. We're missing Simon. I'm missing Simon. I don't know about you guys, but I'm missing Simon. Simon used to come in, drop <laughs> a, a thousand or two thousand dollars and go away. And he hasn't, he hasn't been around in a while. When you give politicians the power over people's lives, over the power over people's livelihood, the power to decide what is done with property and what is not done with property. If you know a politician, and let's say you're worried about your property being defined a wetland, are you going to call that politician and say, hey, look, buddy, you know, we went to school together and you're my buddy and I'll buy you a beer next time and, and you know, I'll buy you a house. I'll, 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 I'll pay for your kid's college. Please, can you just arrange, just call somebody and arrange for my property not to be defined as a, as a uh, you know, wetlands or whatever? Well, of course, you, of course you would do it. And you think the politician can say, no, 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 I have integrity. I don't do that. I don't do special favors. Of course they do special favors. They all do special favors. All at all, at all of these agencies. And they all do it because they want to pad their bank account. They want to pad, they want to make their friends like them. They want to be able to strut around town as the big boss of the town. And they want to project power. People want them. People need them. People grovel before them. People are willing to help them out. Because they're the big shots. It's part of giving government this kind of power. Back now, the desert says, please invite Douglas Murray and God's side. Yeah, I'm thinking of inviting God's side to, to come on the show. He's got a new book out. I'll, I'll ch I need to check out his new book, and then I'll invite him on. What is Abe to help our allies defend their borders? Well, it depends. Is the aid to defend their borders against real threats that are a threat to us as well? Is Russia a threat to the United States? I don't think so. Is Ukraine an ally of the United States? I don't think so. I don't think we need to give Ukraine aid. I mean, I'd rather they win than the Russians win, but it's not yours to give as a politician. It's my money. I want to give aid to Ukraine. I can write a check to Ukraine. You could start a foundation to fund the Ukrainian army. Thank you, Paul. That is really, really generous. I appreciate that. Particularly these days. You know, closer they get to the election, the more hate I get, the more hate mail I get. <laughs> Makes life fun. 
So foreign aid should be only allocated when it is clearly and unequivocally in the self-interest of the United States. But self-interest is defined properly. Self-interest is defined in the context of protecting the individual rights of Americans. Okay, um, so I think politics is corrupt through and through. I think the Bidens are corrupt. I think, I think the Bushes are corrupt. I think the Clintons are corrupt. Clintons, man, are they corrupt and disgusting. I mean, disgusting human beings. Um, they're all. I mean, we have a political class. I mean, in that sense, Trump was right. Yes, you heard it here. I said Trump was right. There is a swamp in Washington. Now, I think Trump is part of that swamp. He just wants to replace, put his swamp animals instead of the other guy's swamp animals. But there is a, it's a swamp in Washington. It's a corrupt swamp in Washington. When Hillary Clinton gets $250,000 to give a talk, and not just her, congressman, uh, sorry, former congressman, because why they're congressmen, they're not allowed to get paid for speeches. But once they leave... They get paid. Why do they, why do they get paid when they leave? So that they can go back and influence. And I don't blame the businesses for doing it. I don't blame the businesses for doing it. Thank you, Jennifer, for Zeban to go to Hades. <laughs> Excellent. I don't blame businesses for trying to defend themselves. Businesses that hire former politicians to lobby. I know a lot of those. I mean, it's a very lucrative job to go to politics. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that it's lucrative to go into politics? But that's because, I mean, I, I've given the example in the past of Willie Brown. Willie Brown, who uh, was, uh, was Speaker of the House in the state of California. Willie, famous Willie Brown, because Willie Brown is the guy who, uh, who slept with uh, Kamala uh, Harris and who gave her her first position in the Democratic Party and first positions, uh, you know, in, in politics in, um, in California and really made her career later on. That Willie Brown. Willie Brown came into politics with nothing and has left politics super wealthy. How does that happen? Now, it might not be suitcases under the table. It might very well be just the fact that he's influential, so people are willing to pay him $200,000 to give a speech. I don't know how, many, how much they pay Willie Brown. They pay two fifty dollars for Hillary. Why? Because they have influence. You're buying influence. So I, I think this outrage about this person being corrupt or that person being corrupt, unless you're really wheeling, unless you're really willing to take them on, to take the swamp on, to take the corruption on, to rid our government of corruption, forget it. And there's only one way to rid the government of corruption. Only one way. It's not to put Hunter Biden in jail, although I have no problem with him going to jail. The only way to rid the government of corruption is to reduce its power. It's to reduce its influence. It's to reduce its size. It's to reduce the amount of money they spend and the amount of control over our lives that we have. So if you want to eliminate government corruption, the way to do that is separate government from economics. Get the government out of our lives. Get the government out of the decision making. Stop foreign aid. Stop trade deals. Trade deals are just ways for our government to give favors to our people and their government to give favors for their people. We lose. The only trade policy we should have is zero tariffs, except with enemies, and then we should ban trade with them. And that's easy. There are like three countries that are enemies, ban trade with them, zero tariffs with everybody else. That's trade policy. That's it. And then there's no corruption in trade. Instead of a tax code filled with a gazillion loopholes, because certain industries lobbied and paid off certain legislatures to get those loopholes installed in the bills. No loopholes. 
zero copper tax would do it, or a flat copper tax with no deductions, you know, except basic expenses. Now, there's some question about what basic expenses are, but the best is just a zero copper tax. And then a flat income tax, a flat income tax on with no deductions, no exclusions, nothing. That's how you get rid of, that's how you get rid of corruption. It's not about revelations about this politician or that politician, this person or that person. Again, I have no doubt that Hunter Biden is corrupt. Hunter Biden strikes me as an incompetent nothing. Why would anybody put him on a board of directors in Ukraine of all places? What's his connection to Ukraine? Other than his father was vice president. Why would he be in a private equity fund? In China, I am probably more qualified to be on the board of a private equity fund in China than Hunter Biden. What are his qualifications? He has one. He knows people in Washington. That's the qualification. It's not necessarily even his father. He's connected to Washington. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals. Uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this, and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like. Share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.